Today we have another video by request. In this video, we'll take a look at how to capture and analyze wireless LAN signals off the air. So the first thing we'll do is let's tune up into the 2.4 gigahertz uh, ISM band. Uh, 2.45 gigahertz should kind of get us there. Reduce our reference level down about minus 30 dBm. And uh, let's turn on the real-time spectrum analyzer display. Uh, kind of give us a better feel for what's going on live in the RF domain. If we maximize the DPX display, I can see an active channel here, and uh, we can see some momentary bursts of higher activity. Now let's uh, tune this channel in a bit more precisely. Now one easy way to do that is to use the channel navigation toolbar. Uh, this allows us to pick uh, from a couple of different standards, and in this case we're going to go up here and tune uh, by the 802.11G channel standard. And we can see where we're tuned right now is approximately channel 9. If we move this to channel 10, we can see that moved over. If I go to channel 11, uh, here we are at 2.462 gigahertz right on channel 11, which happens to be where the wireless activity happens to be here in my office. Now most wireless LAN activity that you'll see uh, these days anyway is uh, going to be one of three flavors. This kind of rounded Gaussian shaped spectrum uh, are typically the beacons that are being put out by the access point. Uh, they will typically use 802.11b uh, type of format. The more rectangular shaped spectrum that we're seeing coming up here a bit more infrequently is either 802.11g or n. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be more interested in capturing. Uh, we're seeing these uh, higher amplitude bursts coming from either my laptop or my phone, which is closer to the spectrum analyzer than the access point. So that's why the beacon is essentially lower power than we're seeing uh, with some of these other transmissions. Now I will warn you that capturing and analyzing wireless LAN off the air can be problematic for a number of reasons. One is triggering. Uh, the 2.4 gig ISM band is loaded with all types of signals from wireless LAN to Bluetooth to microwave ovens to security systems and cordless phones. So triggering on the burst that you want can sometimes be problematic. In my case here, uh, there isn't too much going on in the 2.4 gig ISM band, so we're okay. Uh, the second thing that can happen is uh, with the very short wavelength of 2.4 gig, you can get multipath pretty easily. You know, signals bouncing off of walls and other objects uh, and creating multipath interference, which can affect the modulation quality that you'll measure. But in our case, let's go capture some data and see what we can do. Yeah, the first thing we want to do is set up a trigger and uh, capture some data over time. So let's start off by adding a time overview display. I'm also going to add a spectrum display here and uh, add those displays to the mix here and then uh, start off by setting up a trigger. We're just going to use a simple RF power trigger and I'm going to move the threshold down here. Uh, I can start to see it uh, come down uh, into the, the window here and uh, we can actually see starting to trigger and capture on the leading edge of an RF burst here. I'll start now start adjusting the uh, analysis length and these 802.11g or n bursts are often you know in the neighborhood of a hundred microseconds you know a little more a little bit less so I can actually see you know I'm capturing some bursts here now the beacon bursts these uh, 802.11b's are typically longer they're typically a few milliseconds long but uh, the unless the bursts are carrying a lot of data here oftentimes what you'll see is just these you know 100 200 microsecond long bursts so now I'm capturing some data into memory that we'll be able to go and analyze. Okay, with some uh, data captured here, let's actually just pause this and take a look at what we have and see if we can do some analysis. Uh, so we'll start off by opening up displays. There are options for uh, it, various flavors of wireless LAN. So in our case, we're actually going to go and pick a constellation diagram here. And the default for that constellation diagram is to use the 802.11g standard. Um, but there are options that uh, cover everywhere from A, G, J, P, N, A, C, and B. But let's choose 802.11g because I believe that's what we've got transmitting here. So I'll just uh, make sure that we've got that selected and uh, go and hit replay my current acquisition here. Now I can actually see a 16 qualm uh, constellation diagram. 
So we know that we're actually demodulating that particular signal. And, now, and since the constellation diagram is reasonably clean, there's a, you know, some fuzz and noise here because we've got things like multipath and other things going on here, but that's reasonable for an off-air measurement. We can bring up other displays. If I go to the wireless LAN analysis, we could bring up things like a channel response or an EVM display, a wireless LAN summary, and even a symbol table. And uh, now if we add all those displays into the mix here, and I'll hit replay again, and let me auto scale one of these two of these displays here. Now I can see uh, you know, EVM versus uh, symbol, EVM versus subcarrier, channel response and amplitude and phase uh, for wa the wireless LAN signal, uh, being able to see a symbol table here versus uh, subcarriers. You can see this particular burst was only sent two symbols with uh, the 16 QAM modulation across uh, all the uh, 52 subcarriers here. The wireless LAN summary, if we maximize that, gives us some information about uh, the burst power, peak to average ratio, uh, the EVM in uh, the various locations, uh, some of the packet information about the short and long training fields and the signal fields, uh, and, uh, and other information like that. So we get a lot of information just off the air with this particular signal that we've captured. Now this is one particular burst, but we're requiring many, many triggered acquisitions. So we can actually scroll through and look at those as well. In fact, an easy way to do that, if under the View menu, we could bring up the Replay Toolbar. Now the Replay Toolbar down here gives us these VCR the controls that allow us to navigate back and forth between replaying the current acquisition or the previous one or the first one. And all the number of acquisitions we have in memory is shown right here. I've got 31 acquisitions in memory. Now if I go and say replay the previous one, this previous one only had BPSK data. So there's the BPSK, BPSK modulated data. And we can see we've got a different uh, you know, symbol table here. A lot more symbols were being sent because there were less number of bits per symbol with BPSK than there was with 16 QAM. Let's look at the previous acquisition before that was another BPSK. Another one before that was another 16 QAM. And before that, another 16 QAM, another 16 QAM, another 16 QAM. So we can actually see there were a number of different bursts being transmitted, a couple that uh, were transmitted with BPSK. You know, wireless LAN will take a look at the signal quality uh, that it's getting across the channel and make a decision about what transmission format to use to get the, the most reliable data across. Now if I keep replaying previous ones and previous ones, oh, here we have a transmission that used a 64 QAM modulation. And we can see our DMOD isn't really perfectly clean here. Again, uh, the higher order modulations here are going to be much more subject to things like multipath. So we're going to see you know, a lot more variations in it. But we can actually see this was, a, uh, even though the packet was not very long, because we're sending in 16 QAM, there was actually a lot of data that was sent uh, in that particular packet. Of course, we could always have this thing just uh, play through all of the acquisitions that we have in memory. And we can see it just cycling through all of those and even hit a loop to actually just loop through all of that data to go uh, continually play all that through. All right, so I just stopped it and hit replay last here so we can look at the last uh, acquisition that we captured. I hope this uh, short video gave you a little bit better idea of how to examine what's going on with your wireless LAN signals tune to a particular channel using the channel navigation toolbar, set up the trigger and the time overview to trigger on and capture and record uh, particular bursts of wireless LAN, and then bring up the various displays and, uh, and open up the settings for the wireless LAN to uh, set the appropriate standard and channel bandwidth for the signals that you've got being transmitted. So if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so, and I thank you again for watching.